Hello everyone, thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, that's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so tonight we're gonna continue on the Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along. Uh, we are working on the stitch and pause block and we are gonna be doing some more embroidery on that tonight. So that is the plan. Ooh, I do have a whole stack of more koalas uh, to share with you guys as well. So uh, we made it over 100 koalas, if you can believe it. I think we are up to 103 right now. And I know a lot of you have said that they are on the way in the mail. So we have more coming. That is awesome. I am stoked. <laughs> it is the best part of the day getting the mail uh, with all the little koalas in. So I will show you that as well. If you want to stitch one up, um, you can just go to the koala fundraiser page on penguinandfish.com. I do want them all mailed already if you want it in the quilt. However, if I do get some stragglers, we will make something else out of it. So it will they will not be wasted if you still want to send one, uh, send one my way. Uh, and they're still, you can still donate for sure. So, all right, you guys, let's get stitching on uh, the Stitch and Pause block. All right, so we are almost uh, done with, uh, well, we're done with the stems, and we are working on getting this bow done today. So it's looking awfully cute. Uh, I'm going to just get close up here, and we will uh, start stitching start stitching this chain stitch a little bit. All right, so let's, uh, let's give that a go. So we did this little part of the um, bow already, and I'm gonna just move right along to this part here. And I'm seeing all your guys' comments come in, so thanks for joining me again. I'm kind of mid-stitch right here already, so I'm gonna just start on that. There we go. All right. And thanks again, you guys. We are working on our first week of kind of um, getting some tech issues figured out. We are, we are migrating to a new way to do our videos. Um, uh, however, you guys are our guinea pigs this week. <laughs> so I appreciate you bearing bring with us um, while we while we work on it. We're trying to get one thing figured out a day. <laughs> so I think uh, I think today we got our sync our sound sync a little bit better up front and uh, hopefully we'll improve on everything else as we go. So thanks again everyone. Oh and you, I just already forgot about the koalas. <laughs> so let's let's switch back to the koalas here. Um, so here are all of them I want to share with you today. Here I'm going to get the camera just a little bit lower so you can see a little bit better. Ugh. I like these natural ones. They're just so cute. All of them are just the best. I love all of them. So there's one. Got a cute little pink ear one. Purple. So again, I just want to share these all with you just because they're all so fun. But I do, uh, I'm showing it so you guys can see um, if you see yours or not yet. Uh, just so you guys know if they, if they came or not. So I've shown everyone so far that I've received. But I know there are a pile in the mail yet as well. So this is yesterday's and today's. Here's some penguin and fish fabric on this one. <laughs> He's got a little variegated floss nose there. And there we are, last little feller. So that brought us to 103. <laughs> so that is just crazy. Um, I'm really, really excited about that. All right, let's keep going on here. I would like to get this 
bow pretty far today. And actually, I think I'm going to, um, we'll go here to, to work on this tonight. All right. But the, I'm using the variegated thread here, so it is, it's changing as we go just slightly. The colors are changing just slightly. We did a lot of, a um, lot of chain stitches yesterday and we're just continuing that today. I know Robin, aren't they turning out so nice? Oh, Amy, you saw yours, awesome. Cool, I'm, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you guys are seeing yours, that's great. Oh, you see the pineapple. Yep, the pineapple is on uh, is on the cover of the book here. Yep, for sure. <laughs> so I think um, we may, we might, we might just get done with this on Thursday. And if that's the case, we will check out a new block on on Friday. Um, we may still be working on on this yet. There is still quite a bit to do. All right, I am tacking that down. I'm putting that final little stitch on the other side there. All right, here we go. Oh no, you had to do three, uh, three of the pineapples to get it right. Ah. Okay, let's do that inner inner bit. Ooh, do I have enough thread for that? Well, if I run out of thread, I can always um, start it up again there. All right, we're going around this edge, a little inner bit. Oh, Bonnie, you haven't seen yours yet. Um, Don, oh, Don, you didn't see yours. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know if you just sent it, then I, I probably haven't received it yet. If your name is on, then I can kind of peek. But yeah, maybe I'll go through all of them again once I, um, like before I, I bring them to get made. All right, I think this is going to be my last stitch. I'm kind of running out of thread here. I'm gonna just tack it down with another just little anchor stitch and we're gonna start the next stitch right in that same spot. Looking cute, looking pretty. Oh, Don, you sent yours a long time ago. Um, I might have already shown it in that in that first uh, first few batches. I'll have to peek. All right, and three. All right, let's snip, snip that. All right, and I'm gonna just grab the next uh, bits of floss here. So we did start new floss. Uh, I need two strands. If we can get this bow done tonight, I think that would be really, really good. After the bow, uh, we'll start on those flowers. Ah, they're attached to me. I'm wearing I'm wearing uh, this this sweater that we've been mending for ages. It looks like it, it could use some more mending here. I'm wondering if I could go over with like a fabric strip. I always I've seen that on Pinterest before, and just that little bit of fabric there I think is so cute. I might have to. This might have to go in the repair pile again. This poor little sweater. I was cold this morning. This is my uh, this is my house sweater. My I need to be warm right now sweater. <laughs> oh, 
Shiloh, that's a good idea. Actually, you know what? I, I think I was that was on my list to do. I was going to take a picture of every single one and make like a little flip through of them. Uh, so uh, if I get to that this weekend, I'll, I'll give that a go. But that's right. Um, that was the plan. But yeah, I can go through them. I, I can, yeah, do that. Something like that, at least. Okay, we are woven in three times. I should be able to come up right where I left off. So uh, let's see what that looks like. So right here, uh, that's kind of, that's where I left off. I put that little anchor stitch right there. So now I should be able to come right in on the inside of that last last loop as if I'm starting you know another another piece and that should kind of cover up that that anchor stitch so let's let's just move that out of the way do my next little stitch there Oop. There we go, and uh, we are back in business again. Okay, then this thread is long. Let's shorten it up a bit. I'm just really in love with this this red, this kind of. Um, Dusty Rose. Oh, they're calling it Red Pear. That's that's a better name, a uh, Red Pear, because there is a little bit of uh, a little bit of purple. It, there's there's no purple, but it's got a tinge, a, like a little purple in there. Versus, you know, it's more, it's got more purple than it does like yellow, for example. It's just a little bluier, a little purplier. Okay, one one more, so I get back to the center bit here. Okay, and, I, and I'm gonna tack that down again and we'll see where we're at. Oh, I like this color palette a lot. Look how pretty this is looking. I'm, ugh, it's got so much texture because it's that, um, that chain stitch. Oh, it's pretty. Okay, so let's let's kind of go down this path here, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna open the book again just so I can have have it as a reference. Oh wow, they really put kind of a lot. Okay, so it does kind of bubble out and then come together and then bubble out and come together. Okay, that's kind of what I wanted to check check there just to see if I got that right. Yeah, it's kind of together and then it comes out and like right here it goes. It kind of flattens out there. All right, let's do it. Um, should we should we do the kind of the bottom arc or the top arc first? I'm wondering. Let's do the top arc. So I'm way down here now, so I'm kind of handling it kind of funny. Kind of want to get under this last stitch. There we go. All right, and what's been most comfortable comfortable for me today is kind of to push away from me. I'm still doing that sewing method uh, where I go in and out in the same move, but I'm I'm going away from me for some reason that that feels most comfortable today. I think it's because I can get my thumb in here right away and move move that thread away so I can do uh, that loop. That seems that seems to be working the best for me right now. I do still really like this sewing method for the chain stitch when I'm not using a hoop. It seems it seems the easiest and it seems like I can manage um, my fabric easiest. Oh, now I can make this a bit longer. There we go. Oh, you need some purple scissors, Gretchen. <laughs> ah. All right, 
cruising around. Oh, I know some of you guys have mentioned um, that you'd like the comments again. So the comments have been off a little while uh, if you're watching on a replay um, that started because my phone wasn't recording properly. Uh, and then now we're switching to this kind of mode of filming and I'm hoping to get them back. So soon, soon I'll have comments back on here. So uh, I know it's, it's more fun to watch on YouTube uh, when you can see all the comments. I am actually hoping to do some lives right on YouTube as well. Um, so you can join there at some point. But yeah, getting it all figured out. <laughs> nice, Gretchen. Oh, I mean, Shirley, you got the blueberry ones. Blueberry little guys. I think I have I have a smaller version of, of the blueberry here. I do like that color. It's funny. I had all the colors sitting by me here in my workspace, and they've all been designated... To different projects or something because all that's left here is like this this purple one <laughs> so I, I don't know where all those other little scissors ran off to but I'm hoping they're doing a good job somewhere I like to put uh, I like to put scissors right with the project that I'm working on so I think you know I probably have one with a knitting project I have probably have one you know with with that swan project they just kind of they just kind of run away. They fly away to to where all these projects live. But I got to keep at least one here so so um this poor little purple guy is lonely. Lonely purple I'm kind of making these stitches big uh you can see like they're a bit smaller here and then i'm i'm getting big i i kind of tend to do that when i have a straight away like this is kind of a straight line um it's kind of a habit but i feel like it gets the line done faster and uh um i think it still looks nice so i'm not completely um completely consistent all the time All right. Oh gosh, that stitch seemed super off. <laughs> I just didn't aim well at all there. I don't know what happened. Oh, I am I am by all those seams, so it could be acting a little funny. Or I could have just like got off aim there. <laughs> funny. All right, we're going around this bend. Look how pretty it's looking though. It's always kind of nice to stop every once in a while and, and see how it's going. It's definitely getting a lighter, dustier color here just because that's where it's falling within the variegated, uh, the different, um, the thread colors changing within here. Uh, it's, it's looking fun though. We're cruising. I think we may get this bow done still. I mean, I think the bulk of it is really this part that we're working on now. So we'll see how far this gets us. I'm There's a lot of that, those thick seams uh, here, right where we have this little border. So I'm pushing through these areas a little bit more with my needle. It's definitely easier to stitch, easier to embroider with less less layers. Ooh, yeah, that one, that one was tough. Get in there, guy. There we go. I can, I mean, see how squiggly my thread is getting? That's because I started out with a pretty long piece and it's been going through this fabric over and over again. It's ready to be done, this thread. But we're almost there. 
Oops, see now it jumped out of the way, so I'm just gonna wrap it around around the back of the needle there. Um, I don't know if I if you could see that very well last night. So I just wrapped it around. Uh, if it, this just kind of flayed out like this, so I needed to go around the back of the needle. So I just took it and wrapped it around, and um, then we can pull then we can pull it through again. There, so just like that. So that. Uh, in a pinch, if you're if you can't hold it back with your thumb like this, then then uh, yeah, just go in like this. And again, I'm gonna have to do that again right here, which makes me think time to end this thread. Ah, oh, there's a little left yet though. I'm gonna keep going. Uh, is John, is John, maybe, yeah, John stealing my little scissors? <laughs> yep, and there are, there are no babies or pets to blame. I, I think he's used to, he's used to the blame. <laughs> All right, ooh, yeah, I'm getting short here. I think I'm going to end this right on the point here. That's a good place to end anyway, um, because when you reach a point on, um, when you reach a point on a, a chain stitch, you do want to tack it down. Because if I would have just turned right here, um, it's gonna it's gonna bloop up like this. So if I would just do, if I would turn right here without tacking this down, this little this little fella right here. Um, would not lay flat. So I'm gonna pull it back like that and then uh, tack it down on the other side of that stitch. And I think we are gonna call it right there for, um, for this thread. It is done enough. So let's, let's, I mean, look how twisted it got. Let's uh, weave in the ends and we'll start at that point. This is a great place to stop right at that pointy end of this little pretty bow. All right, grabbing all them threads. Okay, let's snip, and I think I do have two more strands ready to go here. I think these are the last two. We used two last night and uh, then just one today so far. Okay. I may have to snip this in. It's looking a little fuzzy, but let's see if I can get it. All right, good. All right, let's weave in the end again and we will start right where we left off. I guess it takes a little more time to weave in the end than um, just tying a knot, but I do like that knotless back. Um, I think, Gretchen, this may be a little faster than in the hoop just because of the method we're using. I mean, I personally do like using a hoop. Um, I like seeing everything lay flat, and uh, it, it has different uses. So for uh, for these two particular stitches we're using, we're using the stem stitch for for these little guys, and then the chain stitch. Those are two very specific stitches that work really well uh, without a hoop, and that is because we can do that sewing method where we. Um, where you go in and out in the same move. So like in and out in the same move like that um, to do the stitch. Uh, not every stitch works as well to do that method, um, at least in my mind. Uh, so some stitches 
you know, I want to use the stabbing method where I stick the needle all the way down, pull it from the back, and then come back up, um, and then I pull it. I, I think you can get more better accuracy with the stabbing method sometimes, but um, the sewing method for these two particular stitches, the chain stitch and the stem stitch, it works particularly well, which is why I think it was probably two of the main stitches that uh, if you stitched a lot of towels, uh, tea towels when you were younger, or, you know, your grandma stitched tea towels, um, I think they were probably doing it without a hoop, and that's why I think the stem stitch is super, super popular, and uh, what a lot of people know is because it is easier without, um, it can be easier without a hoop you are using that sewing method so it's just it's personal preference in the end but um, for these two stitches without a hoop works well but in general I do still prefer a hoop I like everything laying flat and um, other stitches work better with a hoop I think wonder if we'll have enough thread in this one to do this other little squiggle down here, but I suspect not. Oh, you've just had no success, Kathy, sewing down the paw prints and the pads. Um, yeah, that that was pretty difficult. Um, I, I mean, and we're doing the needle turn applique. I mean, you don't have to do the needle turn applique. Uh, way of doing it, you could just fuse them down with some fusible interfacing. Um, they are small and they have a lot of curves and stuff, so it is it is a tricky needle turn applique. Uh, I definitely don't think mine. I mean, I like how mine are looking, and I don't think I would like them nearly as much without all of the needle turn. Um, applique that we did in the first splinted sampler. I think I gotta learn and practice some tricks there that um, that if I hadn't had those I, I don't think I would have been able to do it. Yep, so I hear you. They are not the easiest for sure. I You, you can do that, Kathy, for sure. If you wanted to take them off and use the steam a seam. Um, you can also just chalk it up to like that's where I was at when I stitched those and um, keep keep working on it and keep practicing it on other projects uh, I kind of I kind of usually go that route I mean unless I'm doing something specific like if I was doing it I don't know for a gift or something first of all I, I doubt I would ever do <laughs> intense needle turn applique for a gift it's just too much but um <laughs> but let's say I was, then maybe I would, uh, you know, tweak it or, or something, or I'd, I'd take it off and do the fusible so it looks nice. But if it's just if it's just for me to learn and me to work on stuff, uh, and it's just going to be in my house and I'm going to use it and, and, you know, wash it and all that, then I don't mind if it's wonky or a representation of where I was at um, with that skill. I think it's kind of like a... It's like a visual diary a little bit. Oh, Gretchen, that's cool. Oh, that's a great place to get them too. So Gretchen said she's going to get some more tea towels from Ikea and um, do more of the mandala love ones. So I know some people have been asking me about that one. First of all, I'm really happy that you guys are liking that design. Um, let me know if you'd like. I, I'm, I'm thinking of doing some more mandala. Like, I'd love to do some holiday mandala designs and some other ones as well. Um, so I think I'll do more of those if you guys are liking that. Uh, or like a mandala series. It's almost like a crocheted doily series. I know we talked about that at some point. I'd like to play around with that, that idea. Um, some people have asked if that is going to be available again. Um, I don't know if it'll be available as a PDF. We may at some point make it into a kit, but right now, right now it was, uh, it was uh, January. It was just January's embroidery of the month. 
So, uh, and that's that's going to be kind of the deal with these embroidery of the months. Um, some may come back in some other form at some point, but uh, most of the time, it's it's it may just be there and gone. <laughs> uh, a chance uh, to stitch it during that month. Oh, you're liking the mandalas? Good. Yeah, that one was fun. I know that's a little different than my, my normal designs, but it was really fun to, to make, and I would totally do something like that again. Oop. My thread's getting pretty twisty again here. You can let it dangle a little bit. Um, I'm actually not sure why it's getting so twisty. It might be this particular stitch and this sewing method. Um, usually I'm doing that stabbing method, so I have the thread long underneath me. That might that might be helping it not get so twisted. Not sure. It's, it's not often that I'm stitching without a hoop and using that sewing method of going in and out uh, at the same time. So um, I don't... Don't know if that's why it's getting all twisted. Oh gosh, I don't think I'm gonna make it to the end. I have about maybe six more stitches to do and ugh, I got maybe uh, not six in me here, we'll see. Well, if not, we'll just pick it up again where we left off. You know, the only a little weird thing uh, about just starting up uh, where I left off is that I'm using variegated thread. So, uh, you know, I might end up on dark red, but when I start the next uh, next strand, it might be like light red. So there might be a little jump in color there. So something that's a way finicky detail if you're stitching with um, variegated floss. Ooh, uh, a Christmas mandala would be gorgeous. Oh, I, I love that idea, Don. And uh, oh, Shirley says one with bunnies for Easter would be awesome. Ooh, that sounds cute. Cute, cute, cute. Oh, I like that idea, Gretchen. Uh, Gretchen says, I love the February one too. The February, the, we're doing the house plants. Uh, we're going to be stitching that next week. So we're, we'll be stitching the house plants, which is the February embroidery of the month. Um, we'll be doing that next week. Uh, Gretchen's going to stitch it on a market tote. Oh, that's a great idea. So I do have bundles left. I have I have actually three bundles left, you guys. So if you want a bundle uh, of the... Oh, I made it. I made it. Yay! A bundle of the house plants for the house plants embroidery where you get the the floss and, and some fabric. And uh, you get that those cute bookmarks, those sweet little cute bookmarks. Um, there's... Three more. I think I have three. Two went out today. And uh, yeah, I think I have three left. So after that, after that, the, the PDF pattern will be available yet. And, you know, I'll still have the hoops and needles, uh, that stuff if you want it. But uh, I won't have that bundle. But yeah, I do. If you, if you want one of those three, uh, I do have the link uh, below here, I believe. All right, and if the page just doesn't go anywhere, that means they're they're gone. But uh, the PDF will be there. Oh, Kathy, you love the bookmarks, aren't they sweet? They're just they feel fancy. That's what I like about them. <laughs> All right, you guys, this is looking really really pretty. Uh, I kind of like the like little wiggle in here. That's that's nice. Uh, I'm out of floss, so I'm gonna need some more. It looks like maybe I might make it with just. One. I think this is a little deceiving, though. I think it might be two threads worth. We'll see. I'm gonna have leftovers, though, of this. Let's uh, let's get about that much. Oh, I can see the cardboard. We're using up all the pretty floss. It's gonna be a sad day when I run out of all my gorgeous floss. Uh, if that ever happens, <laughs> who knows? Who who knows? Oh, you love the bookmarks, but they're hard to get them on the Kindle. <laughs> I suppose so. Uh, that's what that's what masking tapes for. Some double stick tape, stick it to the front of the Kindle. All right. 
I almost, I almost uh, was, my brain was pulling out three strands of floss, but we're only using two. Uh, my normal MO is to do three strands of floss because I'm just used to it. I like the thickness of those stitches, but for the Splendid Sampler, I've been doing, doing just two. Uh, let's see. So I want to do this string here first, or this ribbon, I guess. And then I'm going to do like these little bloops last, uh, just because that's like the most front thing. And I mean, like if we look at this, I mean, if we look at this closely here, uh, you can kind of see, like, look how poofed up above the surface these are, right? I mean, the fabric is way down here. This is like definitely a level up the stitches. So uh, um, to do these, this part last it is going to like sit on top of all these stitches. So it is actually physically going to look in front of them all. So that's why I want to do it last because I want them the most up front. So uh, whatever you do last will be like sitting on top more than more than anything else. And, that's the effect that I want there. Um, all right, I'm gonna just weave into these stitches here, I guess, and uh, start up that bottom little squiggle bow. I have a hunch that this thread won't get me that whole way. Maybe we'll get around the, around that bow tail and uh, then we'll have to get more for the wrapping. Tail and the wrapping, that kind of sounds like accurate bow anatomy. <laughs> Don't know. All right, again, I'm gonna kind of go away from me here. Start about there. Gosh, when you have to go around the outline of something, it, it's a lot of surface area there that you gotta stitch. It's pretty though. I really like the effect of putting chain stitches right next to each other, like a line. You, I mean, you can kind of see it here, just a line next to each other. It just makes such a nice texture. I really, I really do like it a lot. You could fill a whole area with just chain stitches. You might have seen that before on, you know, pretty, uh, pretty. Instagram pages, pretty embroidery Instagram pages. A lot of people do a fill with chain stitch. And that's actually kind of the fun thing. I don't know if you guys have ever tried this, but uh, any stitch that you use for an outline, like we're using this chain stitch as an outline, try doing it back and forth and filling a whole, a whole space with it. Um, it really is pretty and adds all different sorts of textures. If you do a whole area filled with chain stitches, it almost looks like knit. Like it almost looked like you knit rows together and stuck it on a piece of fabric somehow. It's kind of a little magic mini knitting. <laughs> it's just cute. So if you have to like stitch embroider something that looks like a sweater that would be like a, a really fun thing oh, i wonder if they'll ever do a splendid sampler three no Elaine. Uh, yeah i know i that i think that someone brought that up uh a couple days ago actually maybe it was my mom that brought it up or something we were talking about it i don't know i i'm not sure i will do another one i mean i do actually really 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 enjoy it and I've learned, I've definitely learned more working on these Splendid Sampler projects than, than anything else as far as quilting and all these different techniques. So it has been so valuable. Um, but I don't know if I can do another 100 blocks. <laughs> I looked it up. This is actually block 48 for me. So I'm, I, I got a long way to go yet. <laughs> more than half yet. Gosh, that's almost pretty just doing that one side, but we'll, we'll come back up. I, I anchored it because we're at that point 
I think just for safety, I'm gonna go around. So this is this is like what I was doing with the with the chain with the stem stitch. I'm gonna come up. I want to come up at kind of that same spot. So to kind of attach it, uh, I'm gonna just go underneath that last stitch, and then it's kind of locked. I'm I'm not gonna be able to pull that up, and then I can come out in that same the same hole on the front here. So I can come out here without um, being afraid that um, that my whole thread, the whole like last stitch is gonna come through. So that's kind of nice. Just wrapping it around that back of that stitch is helpful for sure. Oh gosh, we're still, <laughs> I'm still, uh, in all of that seam allowance here too. So I'm going through like four layers of fabric here. If you're seeing me struggling, that's why. Oh, Sharla, see now, now that's thinking. Sharla's doing 36 blocks as a, as a wall hanging. Good plan. Oh, but I'm sure I would be tempted if they came out with, with the third one. <laughs> I'm sure I'd be tempted. Oh, it is tough going through this seam allowance here. Whoop, jeez. Snagged snag the thread a little bit there. All right, we're almost out of the seam allowance zone. There. One more and I think we're through. Oop. Thread's getting short again though. All right. Oh, and I think we'll get a few stitches, stitches out of um, from this front area too with this thread. Eh, maybe it'd be better. You know what? I think I'm gonna err on the side of starting starting new floss. We are pretty close to the end of this floss here, and just because we're starting a whole another section, I think I think I better just end this floss and start fresh. We're getting there. We're getting close on the time though too. I think we might go oop, a tiny few minutes over if we want to get that center area done. We'll see. Especially if I keep on threading my needle like this. I, I tend to do that once it get once the thread gets too short. I keep keep accidentally pulling too much and then my needle comes out. Oh, <laughs> you want to have a cute uh, modern sampler? That would be fun. So I have been thinking about, this probably wouldn't be till next year, but it would be fun to do a big embroidery stitch along for the whole alphabet. <laughs> I have that whole like whole alphabet of animals and it I'm telling you it makes the cutest uh cutest little um kind of oh, a little bit bigger it makes the cutest quilt for a little kid and you could actually just do a few and just have it say a name uh, I think that would be really really kind of fun it does make just like the sweetest sweetest quilt so I thought we could maybe do each of those as a stitch along and then um, sew it all together something like that maybe and actually I do want to do a lot more fun little projects and stuff too so uh, you know you can only do so many projects I suppose I'm excited for the ones that we're doing though uh, I'm really having fun doing the embroidery of the month with you guys and um, 
I'm excited for the Orophil. Ooh, that's coming out soon. What's today? Today's like the 12th. So in three days, uh, the new Orophil block of the month, uh, quilt block of the month is coming out. So that'll be exciting. February's block. So um, I'm July's block. So I, I have it designed. I just have to sew it. Uh, so that'll be kind of fun. I have to sew it and write a pattern. <laughs> and actually, uh, I, I, uh, I went with your guys' advice and I did actually put a bunch of embroidery in it. <laughs> so I gotta, I gotta embroider it too. I'm actually making it so it works with or without embroidery. So, uh, there'll be, there'll be the choice. So I get to work on that. Um, so July, July is me. So stick around for July. Uh, but, but February's is released on, on, um, the 15th. What is that? Is that, wait, what's the day? 12th Wednesday. All right. So on Saturday, I wonder if they release it on Saturday. Well, if they don't, then Monday for sure. But like on, on Saturday, I think they're going to be releasing the second block. <gasps> you, Sylvia, you made four of the January block. Oh my gosh. Are you putting them together? I bet you they'd be so pretty together. I really had fun with that, that first block. I, I really like how it turned out. I'm still honestly a little undecided about that dark fabric that I'm using, but I know once we make more blocks with it, it's all going to kind of come together. So I'm, I'm not too worried, but I don't know. It's still on my mind. <laughs> it's a silly thing to have on, on your mind, I suppose, but there it is. All right. I'm going to actually anchor this here. I'm kind of, I'm kind of following, I'm kind of following the shapes here. So, uh, I'm kind of, uh, like there, there's this kind of big bloop here and then this kind of bloop is on top of that one. And then this biggest or the, this bloop is on top of all of it. So I'm just kind of this like wrapping. So I think I'm going to anchor this down and then I'll do the next one. Maybe I'll just go back the other way and then I'll go all the way around here. I think that's, that's kind of like the game plan for that. Look how pretty it's looking like, look at all that texture. Uh, but this is like where, where I like the couple rows next to each other. Ah, it is just pretty. And there is some variegation of the color. It's getting a little pinker there. Oh man, I need to do more with, more with chain stitch. I, I really do like it and I don't use it all the time. It's a nice thick, thick line. It really is one of my favorites. Uh, for the first splendid sampler, when I, for the first splendid sampler, I had one of the blocks in the book and that was all chain stitch to make it look like a doily. Cause I mean, doesn't this look just like a crocheted chain stitch? Um, so that was the first splendid sampler. I participated in that one, but yeah, there I did a lot of chain stitch and I missed it. This is fun. And I kind of like, this stitching without the hoop with the chain stitch. I'd like to kind of play around with that idea more. More with hoop and more without hoop. Oh, surely that is good to hear. So <laughs> we're working on it. Uh, slowly but surely, uh, we will we will tweak these these videos. So again, uh, thanks for playing along. <laughs> I I appreciate that. Oh, you remember that block? Oh, that's, that's nice. I, I had fun with that one. That one I'd actually like to make again sometime. And I know when we, when we did that, we talked about, it would be fun to have a whole series of doily looking, um, embroideries. And that really would be fun. Like how pretty, that would be just so cute in the kitchen or something. I still want to do that. We might still have to do that sometime. All right, I'm just kind of picking a spot for the last row here. Uh-oh, I feel like I got caught on something. All right, um, last little blip around here and then we're done with uh, with this bow. I'm gonna just, my, my ink looks like it's moving a little bit. I just wanna do a quick double check at what the shape of this bow looks like a little bit. Oh, okay, so, so it does kind of just bloop 
down. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see. So it does kind of bloop down at the corner here, at the corner here and here. It's just like a little, little like point. Um, I think it's just kind of meant to look like it's wrapped around that, um, those bottom, uh, bottom, I don't know, tips of the uh, ends of the ends of the plant there. So I think as long as we're kind of arcing over that, I guess that's not really what my drawing looks like, but oh well. I'm going to just kind of <laughs> go around in a little oval. I think that's what we're going to end up doing here. here. Let's get this out of the way again. Okay. I'm just going to do whatever's easiest, I think. How about that? I already brought the thread up here, so that's where I'm going to start. And, I, and these are big, thick lines anyway, so if we get close, then it'll be fine. Oh, this is getting awfully twisty already. These are pretty tight curves here, so a lot of times I would, if I'm getting really picky, I would maybe anchor these down so they stay in place and they don't want to drag up a little on the stitch before, but I think we're, I think we're going to be fine. I'm just going to keep going. I really, really am happy with this color. It's bold, but I think once we get the flowers in and all that, I think that'll bring some attention back into the bouquet a little bit. Because, I mean, right now your eye definitely goes right to that bow, which is fine. I think that's kind of fun. But I don't want it to take completely away from from um, the bouquet, for sure. I mean, that's where we put in all the work, right? With all the little uh, needle turn applique. So once we get some of that, those flowers, it'll, our eye will go back up there, too, I think. All right. Uh, so for this last stitch... Uh, this is going to be kind of fun. So for this last stitch, I'm going to just go underneath the beginning of those stitches there. So I'm, I'm just going to go underneath there and it will look like it's just wrapped around that like a normal stitch. And then I'm going to go back at that starting point. So there we go. It's just like a little, it's a continuation there. And there we are. Such fun little stitches there. <laughs> All right, let's uh, weave in that back and then we are done with that bow and it turned out so pretty, I think. Uh, let's take a peek at our plan for the flowers. It'll be all about flowers tomorrow. And I think we might get real close, if not done, tomorrow. And I think this block is actually a little bit bigger because typically when we work on these blocks that have all the embroidery and a lot of handling I think they make the block size like seven inches and we're supposed to cut it down to six and a half inches I'm not cutting it down until it's in the quilt really so um, I've been leaving it kind of larger so I'm not gonna worry about that oh it does kind of look like raffia doesn't it um, Bonnie we just wrapped some Nice loose raffia around there. Okay, I think it is just looking adorable. Um, all right, let's uh, let's just kind of peek at what I was thinking for for these. Oh, we got a little excess piece of the, it already. Let's just take that off. So uh, there are, if we look at the pattern again, oops, um, there are there are light colored flowers and there's kind of some darker colored flowers so there are two there's two variations of flowers and I do have a guide for them um, so that's that's nice um, so I we had these three colors is what I was thinking and I mean I'm still thinking I like this kind of mauve -y and uh, I mean this really is just kind of like a tan it's called pebble um, I kind of think those are really pretty together they're just soft they're pale, they're just light. And then there's French knots in all of these, like the dots, uh, maybe you can tell here. Oh, they did like little green French knots there. But there's French knots in the center of all of these flowers. And I thought that's where we could add like a little pop, 
like this purple. And this has a lot of vari variegation in it as well, um, if we want to get real close. So this has a lot of variegation. So some of the flowers will have like a light purple, some will have a dark purple. So again, this is kind of, this is kind of the palette that I'm thinking. But this, this just kind of pale, pale pink, this pale gray. I don't know, those are pretty sweet together. I think I think it's gonna be nice. So that is the plan for tomorrow. A whole pile of Lazy Daisy stitches and some French knots. And I think that is the plan. So I am stoked for that. All right, so I think we will leave it there tonight. Uh, let's get back. Hello again, guys. Get that guy up back up there. You can see all of our crazy technology here. So there we are. It's always kind of, oh, it's a little bit bright. I don't know. Zoop. There you guys. <laughs> there you can kind of see how small it is, though, all those little stitches. Uh, but awesome. So thanks again, you guys. Uh, again, this is from the Splendid Sampler 2 book. So I do have a link to that if you're uh, interested in joining in. Um, you don't have to do all 100. <laughs> Feel free to do the couple that you think are fun. Uh, some people make more than one of the same and then just make a quilt out of that. That's totally fine. I have learned more from doing the Splendid Sampler uh, quilt alongs than any other... Um, quilt along for sure. It just has everything in. I do have videos for every block in the first Splendid Sampler and every block that I've done so far in the second sampler on uh, the, the Penguin and Fish uh, Penguin and Fish movies on YouTube. So you can check that out. And this video will go up there as well. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube or if you like watching replays on YouTube, I will get these comments up again soon so don't worry uh, you'll be able to see the whole conversation again soon as well so thanks you guys i will share any more koalas with you that i get tomorrow and this weekend i'll probably take photos of all of them so you guys can see so awesome have a great evening you guys and i'll see you tomorrow good night